The Spoken Token is a proud member of the Pod Studio One Podcast Network. Hello, everybody. I am Larry Neal. And I am Alex Wallace. And we are the Spoken Token Podcast. Welcome into the big show, Mr. Alex, sir. How are you doing? I'm great. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to hear it. I'm thrilled to hear it. Would you like to share it, everyone, why you're so great? No, because you made me, this is the second time we've done this intro, and you won't let me say why I'm laughing. So we're just going to let this be one of those things that's out there in the world, like the bug. What hey, was, you know what? What was Horatio? Was it Horatio? You can blog about it. I'm not blogging about nothing. Well, then there you go. <laughs> was it Horatio? It was Horatio. It was Horatio. <laughs> oh, oh, who was that other voice? I know, somebody answered. Oh, it's a disembodied voice. I didn't hear anything. You oh, sure? yes, you did. Are you sure you're not just hearing voices in your head? No, nope, no, I, I strongly... <laughs> strongly believe there is a person sitting right next to me. It is our it is our one live studio audience member. <laughs> no, Larry, introduce our guest. We do have a guest tonight, none other than my oldest sister. I'm so excited that she's here. I'm not going to say her name. I'm going to let her introduce herself. Why don't you tell uh, everybody who you are? I am Adrienne Neal. I see. Woo! Oh, that, that was good use of I am, <laughs> I opposed to not that. Well, I heard him getting on you. So I, I, see, I, uh-huh! I, was just, I didn't even have to say it. I knew Woo-hoo! I needed to just go with that. Well, also, she's family, so she already knows. <laughs> Fair enough. But but you know what? To finally have a Neal on my side, I'm, I'm good. Okay. All right, Larry. So Plus, enough. she's older than me, so where do you think I got it from? This is true. This is true. I, I already like her better. So, all right. What, what, what do you want to talk about, Larry? What we got? Well, I got a few things that I'm looking at, you know, on our old friend Kickstarter. Oh, bless. Well, you know, I'm just looking. No, you're not. You're not looking. No, I'm just looking. You're looking with a credit card. No. Mostly looking. <laughs> <laughs> but, I know I do want to share a couple that we are that I'm looking at that will actually still be live as of when you guys hear this on the 15th. I just want to run through them really quickly. Obviously, our good friends at Bear Attack. Bear Attack. Bear Attack the game. That one will still be going on. Uh, Tiny Epic Dungeons is another yeah. one. If you've somehow missed that one, go and check that one out from Gameland Games. That's Tiny, good stuff. It's epic. It's dungeon. It's a dungeon crawl. Oh, actually, uh, Tiny Epic Pirates should be uh, coming out within the end of the month, by the March. That one's shipping, correct? You're right, yes. Yeah, so it should be in our, my oh, hand. Did you get that one? I did. Oh, we'll play that. Yes, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, then I got another couple of really cool ones. City of Winter, which is a Listen, real- we just wa- We just got out of that? I don't know if I want that like as no, a board game. This is really cool. I almost sent it to you when I saw it, and I put it on the list, um, and I want you to look at it. But it's it's basically a game. Um, it comes in a scroll. It starts in a scroll. There's a, a cloth scroll that comes in the box that you unscroll it, and it's got things that you're going to be doing, and you're going to be moving. You're personifying a family. There are cards involved, and as you unroll the scroll, and you deal with the things that come up, and you go through this whole scroll, and you'll have this whole story history and family history and a lineage set. And then there's a bigger cloth map that you unfold that's the city that you got to. And then there are going to be things to interact with in that. And it's tactile. It comes in a big, beautiful box. It looks fantastic. So that one's really interesting. Go out on Kickstarter and check that one out. The last one is a tabletop RPG, Coyote and Crow. Have you heard about this one? I, I've seen oh. the, the, uh, the, the box art or the, 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 the kind of the, the cover art. Coyote and Crow, and I want to I want to read just a little bit about what there's actually. So I don't want to say it wrong. Isn't it's, it like future it's a science fiction and fantasy tabletop RPG set in the near future where the Americas were never colonized, created by a team of Native Americans? Oh, and it looks fantastic. It is well overfunded. It has 23 days to go as of today. We are recording, which is the ninth, so it will still be open. Uh, when you guys hear this, by all means, go out there and take a look at it. If you play tabletop RPGs and you're interested in it at all, by all means, go and take a look at that one. That one's pretty neat. So, yeah, that's, you know, kind of what's going on with me in terms of some Kickstarter stuff. Just stuff I'm watching. Are you going to play Coyote and Crow by yourself? I can't. No, it's, Wait, it's, not, you, it's not a single player game. Okay, I'm saying, but I mean, you just oh. said you were looking at it. Well, I mean, I, well, somebody got to buy it if we're going to play it. We can't just play it because we want Listen, to. Listen, you, you, like, we tried to role play together and then you left. We, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about it. He that. took his toys and went home. That, that's not on this show. Carl, I think that's your next appointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Adrian, Adrian, before we get into the actual show, this is your opportunity to share anything you need. Like, as, as so someone who has listened to at least one episode of our show, so, well, like, how, how much, uh, like, what has Larry said that is true? How much is false? And what is he leaving out? Well, I was a little bit concerned about. Just remember, we're going to have your wife back. About. <laughs> I was that's, concerned I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> about the, when he was talking about you was four. Uh-huh. And we were driving down the road and a lot was happening. So I 
think I missed part of the story. You probably but did. But something about he was <laughs> watching his older siblings, which would be myself and our other sister, mm-hmm. to see got, what to do. And I just kept thinking, that's not what he was doing. He was watching us to see if he could palm something and hide it <laughs> so we wouldn't know. That's what he was doing. You couldn't even do that with that game. Okay, Jack. Do- was it Dodger? What game was it? <laughs> hey, Taxi. And you couldn't even do that with Hey, Taxi because the car, it was electric. It was like electric football. I didn't play Hey, Taxi. Yes, she did. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe see what I- Hey. This is a lesson but for, here's, here's for a, those movies I, we were talking about I'm before a, we got started. I'm, when you try to retcon stuff, it gets all discombobulated. I'm going to just let you know. Leave the timeline so, alone. So, like, real life person, four-year-old. I'm going to not take the word of a four-year-old. <laughs> Man, I ain't four. You, in the story, you were four. I ain't four now, telling you. Yeah, No, but you, there's no way you could remember the exact name of the game. Okay, never mind. You probably could. But um, <laughs> I'm was, like, I already a have. Four, I already four told taking you notes. That. Pull that a little. I already <laughs> told you that. I mean, we 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 played a lot of games <laughs> right. as children. We did. Yeah. We played a lot of games, yeah. especially during the winter time. You know, because yeah. we Tennessee used to get a lot of snow. And oh, I, I know, right? And I, 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 we just had it. I don't like. <laughs> that was great. That was and great. <laughs> probably where he got his love of board games from. But you know, we would have many an argument. You should talk to our other sister. She, oh. she will corroborate this. Many an argument because he was cheating. Money, Yo! pieces, the cards. You know, he magically always got the exact card he mm. needed. You are seeing mm. now why the epiphany of the peace moment mm. was so fantastic and why it mm. stuck out. You know what we're going to do on that note? Mm. We're going to move on into the show. No, no, we ain't. We No, no. Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Spoken Token Podcast, episode number 85. At this time, Alex and Larry give first impressions of the brand new Maglev Metro from Ted Allsbach. Alex asks Larry for advice on serious topics surrounding FOMO, and the pair are then joined by a very special in-studio guest who discusses with our own resident teacher, Alex, the use of board games and gaming in the classroom. You do not want to miss this valuable information. All this and so much more. So, sit back relax. Go on and fire up your notepad to take good notes and turn us up as we join your hosts, Alex Wallace and Larry Neal. All right, everybody, and we are back. Mr. Alex, we're doing a new segment to the listeners, but you and I have been talking about this for quite a while uh, with you being a teacher, um, Mm -hmm. and we named the segment Board Class Game Room uh, make sure, no, I need you to say it with the correct inflection, the oh, way that you wrote it. Okay. Board. Board class. class. Game room. There it is. There, there's a question mark and, and <laughs> uh, an exclamation point. Very important. And what we're gonna what we're gonna do basically the premise of the segment is that we're gonna talk with our resident teacher, which is Mr. Alex, and that's why my sister is here today with us on using board games as learning aids in real life classrooms because both of them as teachers have done this. And we just want to talk about some of the games that they've used, how they used them, want to get them to get into the stories, maybe talk about the classes or the, the grade of students that they that they deal with, and just kind of share some of that information, hopefully to be helpful to some teachers out there maybe thinking about using board games or trying to figure out a way to maybe tackle some subject matter. So again, welcome to my sister, Adrian, Mr. Alex. Adrian, guys, go at it. So uh, Adrian, why don't we go ahead and start with you, and uh, you can kind of just introduce yourself uh, and maybe uh, share uh, with our audience things that you play, or I'm sorry, uh, things that you teach uh, and that kind of stuff. And then I'll kind of uh, come on the t- uh, back in and, you know, because most people have at least heard s- some piece. Because I don't want to brag or anything, but uh, I'm famous to at least the seven people who listen to us. Okay. Kind of a big deal. Yep, yep. <clears throat> well, <laughs> I've been teaching for 21 years. Okay. In all elementary grades one through four. Um, I started in Massachusetts, which is when I had the opportunity to really use board games. <clears throat> And and just, you know, your common childhood board games, sorry, Monopoly. Um, I think we played Shoots and Ladders, um, or I taught them how to play Shoots and Ladders. Um, not my favorite, though. No, um, I bet. <clears throat> what it does say, sorry, what's the one? Um, trouble. 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 Yeah, you pop trouble. that, yeah. yeah. Pop yeah, And they love Trouble. Mm-hmm. Look, they love Trouble. But after a while, you've been inside all week. Mm-hmm. Nice. So, yes. well, it's going to be some trouble. Yeah. Let's get rid of the Trouble, because yeah. we're going to have some trouble. <laughs> but... Um, I loved it. It was not an easy task to do because, again, 
I was working with Mm six-year-olds. And it was all about me, me, me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, you know, we had to learn how to take turns. And and then we had to learn how to share the pieces. And we had to learn that sometimes somebody else gets the blue piece. And so you've got to have the red piece. Yeah, Larry. Sometimes (laughs) other people get the green piece. I'm not six, man. (laughs) I just want you. We played a game last night. Uh and and He just, when you bring out the game, what do you do? If it's got green in it, just throw me the green piece. Don't make me ask you. So maybe, but, he, maybe he but, missed your class. But he did, because sometimes you can't have the green piece. This is true. Somebody else gets sometimes the, the green piece. you Today, don't get the green time. piece. Every time we've gone to Tennessee game days and somebody else at the table has won a green, I've given it to him. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> He's just saying because he knows I can't remember yesterday. So. It's true, though. <laughs> but, I mean, that that has been my experience. Um, when I came home, back to Tennessee, I had the opportunity with some third graders to teach them how to play some games. Because in the wintertime, you can't always go outside. And kids need a break and teachers need a break. And it's like, your recess is my recess. Yeah. So, <laughs> you go take your recess and I'm going to take mine over here. <laughs> and I am not a part of this recess deal. <laughs> and so I had the opportunity to to teach that, but then also to get them to start th- thinking strategically. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the strategy that I can use? If you want to win, we all want to win. Right. But what strategy are you going to use to beat the other players at the table? Mm-hmm. Um, so that was pretty cool. Most recently, I've been teaching second grade, and my second graders have loved the winter because they know – it's on recess days when it's too cold to go outside, they get to play the board game. Uh, and so they have loved that where like some of my colleagues are like, my kids are bored and my kids are not doing whatever. I'm like, y'all better go to the $5 store and get some board games because yeah. they work. So that's kind of and, and, where I am. And, you know, <laughs> so I have I have used, so I've taught elementary. Uh, I currently teach middle school. Uh, I've taught high school. And I, I mean, I have used games at every level. And um, the especially like your um, sorries, your paydays, your uh, checkers, mm-hmm. um, all of those things. Like if you can teach and that's the hardest part, mm-hmm. if you can teach them the rules, um, then one, after that, like they're golden. Yes. And, and, and the great thing is, is they will never get bored of it. Right. Well, now, I mean, they will like the novelty will wear off. But it's always an option for them, yeah. uh, and I and I especially with the uh, elementary school students, I've really enjoyed that. And and I mean, you know, they may not be good, like strategic, uh, you, you know, or as as strategic. But the fact that they can now pick up something that is, and we talk about here on on the, on the podcast all the time, that's social, you, you know, yeah. uh, um, and allows them to kind of get into that, and then and then do that in a way that's. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, I don't even know where my point was going, but I just, I, I just, I, I think that it, it, it's realize that if you're dealing with younger students, the burden is in the beginning. Right. Is 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 having the patience to right. to teach them in uh, at the beginning because the um the, the the thing to watch out for is is like all right, well here's checkers, go and play, and then a second grader is not going to read the rules. No, like, they don't have. They don't have the mental capacity to, to, to walk through that. They don't have the, the processing skills to, to pick up step one, step two, do this, do that. Right. But if you can, you know, if you're a teacher or if you're home, and I, as, as I was thinking through this, homeschool parents, like this is just as, especially with, or, or people who are still doing distance learning, you mm-hmm. know, and you have younger kids, um, just realize that the, the burden is in the beginning. And then after that, like they will, they'll own it. Yeah. They will own it. And what's even cooler is it's okay if they're not playing by the rules. Yeah. It's okay. If they've just made up like this new move in checkers, that's awesome. They're now experiencing creativity. Right. They, and what they're, what, what they're showing is, is that they have uh, assimilated the rules and now they are synthesizing new things uh, to activate. And so right. that's what I, one of the things I've really loved about um, using board games with elementary school students. And I, I know last year, Unfortunately, I had um, the children that I taught in second grade. I also had them in first. Mm-hmm. So we were together, first, all of first grade, and we would have been together all of second. Oh, but bless. I know. I was so heartbroken. But, you know, at the beginning of the school year, I didn't have to reteach them how to play the games right. because they knew about it. And as a matter of fact, 
during the like September, um, August, September, October when it was still really, really hot. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to go outside. They were like, "Can we have indoor recess?" And I would go, "What are we gonna do? We can play the games. What game y'all gonna play?" And you know, just to get them thinking about it. But you know, and they knew, hey, only four of us can play this at this right. time, or only two of us can do this one. And I did. I had checkers, um, chess, the little. What's the one that you drop in? The little drop in. Yeah, the, uh, Connect Four. Connect, connect yeah. Four. Thank you, brother. The <laughs> Connect Four, um, and they 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 loved it. They and and that would it. be for any of if we have any uh, elementary school teachers, that would be one caveat is if you're going to uh, do this, you need at least three copies per game because you, no one's gonna uh, most of like you know, your second grade, third grade, they're not gonna sit in line and go. Okay, I'll wait my turn to play check. I mean, they're gonna, you know, that one kid's be like, I got the red one. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> right. You know, but um, <laughs> but what the great thing about checkers is it's so inexpensive. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can get one for 250 or, you know, easily uh, anywhere. Same thing with Connect Four um, and all of those. And I um, w- even Connect Four, I used to with my sixth and seventh graders, we would have Connect Four tournaments mm-hmm. uh, just on kind of off days. And I mean, man, we, we like, we uh, riled them up. And so it was this cool. Kind of like community bonding thing, and and all of this is is great. So if you are a teacher out there listening to this, once they learn it, they will love it, and you will love it. But in the beginning, you're gonna have to play these games with them. Yes, because you have to teach them, you know, the just the basics of setting it up, right? Of taking it down, of making sure we have all the pieces picked up off the floor, and somebody didn't run through and grab a piece and take off running. Yeah. Ha ha ha. And it so in the beginning it was you know it was a little daunting a little taxing because it was just me right and so I had to kind of rotate and yeah. so I would say okay today I'm gonna play with whoever's playing checkers we're gonna play checkers whoever's playing monopoly we're gonna learn to play monopoly whoever's doing sorry I'm gonna play sorry with you it took me about maybe a month mm-hmm. to you know make my round so that I had every child in there at least familiar with it right so that they could play it but you know once that everybody had reset. I had recess. <laughs> they had recess. Well, and it's just like well, it's happy. like any other skill in education. I mean, the whole the whole point is engage. So you know, share it, right? Show it, and then uh, you know, now you go do it, and, and then yeah, and then now you go do it, and and I mean, and I think board games are, are are the exact same thing. But the fact that like, and this is one of the things that as a teacher myself, it kind of goes to that bigger sort of educational philosophy is. Um, spend like you have to spend all the effort those first like three to four weeks of school to to work through those procedures and like make sure everybody is like no 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 we're gonna go do this we're gonna do this again again but like and it may feel daunting and overwhelming like why are we spending all this imp- this time doing that but then when you can sit back in November or, uh, you know mm-hmm. January February and everything that you drilled into yep. them and all this and they're doing it on their own and yep. you and I mean you, you yep. really are you you can get to those next levels right. and you as you know so that's just if if you're going to be an education major um listen there is a book called The First Days of School uh, by Harry Wong it is the single greatest piece of educational material you will ever read ever um but that's the whole point yeah. is you spend the first 3 4 weeks working on procedures. And so with board gamings, if this, if this is something that you're doing as an education, um, uh, you know, it, it, in your current life as education, like spend the time mm-hmm. now and it will pay off dividends Absolutely. for the rest of their life. Absolutely. The- Especially with second graders. Um, I know the math curriculum that we use, it, it's, it's a whole new way of looking at math. Right. Um, so, they need to be able to recognize patterns. They yeah. need to be able to recognize a strategy and understand that just because you used vertical form and I used the place value chart and we both got the same answer, that's okay. Right. There's no, you know, there's no yeah. wrong with that. And board games, I think, lends itself to that because, you know, you didn't win this time. But if you stop and think about it, what did the person who won, what did they do different? Right. You know, can you figure out their strategy? And if you're you're looking to play, um, even just with tic-tac-toe, you know, what's that pattern that that other person was trying to to beat you with? You mm-hmm. know, can you can you find that? Can you see that? Can you do it? Can you stop it? Can you take it in a different direction? And it is um I do, like board games. Do second graders, you don't start multiplication until third grade, correct? We introduce it um, and by doing repeated addition in okay. second. 
but the true multiplication, they will start in third grade. Well, because I thought of, um, as I was doing research, I was just kind of looking at games teach as, as teaching tools. Um, I started thinking about, um, for younger kids, King Domino. Um, so basically, it's a game in which you are, they're like domino tiles, but mm-hmm. they're, they're, I mean, they are, they're domino tiles, um, but just out of cardboard. Uh, and you, you actually build a kind of a nine by nine, or was it three by three grid? I haven't played it. Oh, you haven't played it. Okay. I think, I think it's a three by three grid. Um, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a grid. You're building a grid, but the way that you score it is, um, you actually score, um, printed, like there are crowns versus the number of tiles of a particular type. Mm-hmm. So let's say you have wheat and you have three crowns in your wheat and then you take each square of wheat that's in that connected. So then, so then you could actually do, um, your, um, your addition there. Didn't we play that? No, no, we played something like that. What's that have, game we you had that we had to connect stuff and Carcassonne. No, we had um, to build between those. two cities. Oh, yeah. between two cities. <laughs> yeah, that might be a little bit too much for a yeah. second grader. <laughs> but but uh, but it was a little too much for us. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Us, she but... won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. She listen, won. By she the did way, win. I see patterns. <laughs> yes. By the way, I, listen. I, as many he has kind of thrown you guys under the bus a number of times for the oh, times he's that he. Talking about Oh gosh, she talks about like man, the the like Carl. Even Carl knows about like. Hey man, don't spoil it. The family. Don't spoil it. They'll go back and listen to it. We need yeah, all the listeners. We can. Kill. This is true. Do we you do. know how many how many new games that we play in a year? No, he, and like, on visits. It's like it's like. So four. he's so we're his guinea pig. No, 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 no. See, that's the that's the thing. He says he wants you to be his guinea pig, but, but you're y'all like, ain't. Y'all yeah, ain't. it's like <laughs> let's play villainous or. So I'm just saying, hey, just broaden your horizons, okay? Right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to encourage okay. you. For, for the sake okay. of my brother over here, I'm going to encourage you. Okay. Um, but no, so I, I would, uh, for, uh, King Domino is is one, is great for it, those math skills. So now kind of to bring it up a bit, and I, I don't know if you have any, uh, have you had any dealings with middle school students at all? Um, um, not a whole lot. Yeah, it takes a special I breed and a lot of alcohol. Really so. I mean, I had a middle, middle schooler at one point. <laughs> And uh, he true. almost didn't make it. Oof, he yeah. was real close. Yeah. And again, he's an only child. Uh-huh. So he has OCS. Do uh-huh. you have OCS? Yes. <laughs> yes. Only child syndrome? Yes. OCS? I don't, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I mean, is, 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 there, is there an ointment for that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> to be applied <laughs> at childhood with other siblings. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> hey, man, that's all right, man. That's okay, I got you. That's what he has. Yeah. yeah OCS. So. Listen. <laughs> All right, fine. All right, I go, my, go to my doctor tomorrow. So. <laughs> Excuse me, doctor. You, can you help me fix OCS? <laughs> what? Oh, I said I got it. <laughs> All right. So, but no, I, don't, I, I get. So apparently, Larry thinks I have OCS. <laughs> so and um, but middle schoolers, um, I have I have I've had actually um quite a bit of success uh, with middle schools actually. And now that I think about it. So with fourth and fifth graders, this this may be kind of ridiculous, but I actually for three years um, took. Uh, there's a game called Star Wars Rebellion. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's the map of the Star Wars galaxy, um, and it comes with a bunch of little Star Wars ships, and you have the the imp- so wonderful the the Empire, and then you have the Rebellion, and all this kind of stuff. Love it. Well, uh, a buddy of mine and I, we actually created quote unquote model UN but set in the Star Wars galaxy. And and so and it was with fourth and fifth graders. And so our first year we had like eight fourth and fifth graders. Okay. By our third year we had 15. And each group of we had three people and they owned their own planet and it produced a different type of resource. So we wrote our a whole rule set and if you built this certain amount of like if your planet produced this then you could build this, and then and it and it what it did was, and we did it over five days, and f- for three oh, cool. for three hours a day, for five days. Wow! And at first we were like, this will never last. We'll do this for a day, and then but you know, and it, it turned out to be one of the coolest things, and it was so neat to see, uh, to see the political machinations of these students going like, I don't trust. Mr. Wallace, like, and then my buddy would play the emperor. And so he was kind of the moderator and he would set taxes and we would do all. And then eventually we would sort of build death stars. And so that they would, they would all either like, uh, we join in with the galactic. We're, we're, we're with the, the, uh, the empire, that death star, that going to blow my stuff up. And, and, and so it was, I love it, was, it. it was so wonderful. But, and I say that to encourage those of you 
who have uh, those uh, those older elementary age students, mm -hmm. listen, they can really dig in to some of the deeper things. My fifth grader, so I, I, have, a, I have a fifth grader, I have a second grader, and then I've got a four-year-old, but my fifth grader can play some of our uh, the higher-end games that Larry and I get into. Yep. Yep. Um, and so I just want to encourage... Again, the burden is on the front end yep. with yeah. the teaching, right. but but the brain is there to understand the game right. and, and, and to get right. in. Because, I mean, you know, we've heard me talk about uh, so Legion. So I kind of want to move into so my middle schoolers, and this is where I've actually used the majority of board gaming as far, and it was mostly in my history classes. Okay. Because for some reason, the board gaming hobby is absolutely enamored with Historical settings. Yes. Dry historical <laughs> things. They, they ain't got to pay no copyright. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. I mean, that's that's really what it is. Absolutely. And so I have, um, so I, in my ancient history classes, um, I used Seven Wonders. Um, I used uh, uh, Via Appia, which is about the building of the giant Roman road. Um, uh, currently, I've, I've been working with a buddy of mine, and he's using Pandemic Fall of Rome mm -hmm. to just kind of... Uh, simulate uh, in the uh, 300 AD as uh, Rome kind of starts to fall and you have the invasions of the Gauls and the Viscoths and all those guys. Um, and so uh, Seven Wonders, I, I thought would be uh, better, a, a better teaching tool. Um, and it just, it was, it was fun. Um, it, and it, it, it taught some interaction. How much did you change the rules on that one? Not much, not much. Really? I, I actually, um, so what I did was I had them in groups um, and then um, I actually played two games at once. Okay. And so I didn't really... It, I needed some more tinkering with that one, but I just kind of... I, That's why I was asking, yeah. I was like, for a teaching environment, because I know that one pretty good. That's pretty chaotic. Yeah. Well, it wasn't chaotic. I mean, I had a smaller class. Well, I, I mean, for the teaching environment. I yeah. Because you, you're just doing stuff. Right. Well, you know, and what was really what we en what we ended up doing was that the main teaching position of that was we had actually had a Socratic seminar afterwards. Okay. So I had seventh graders talking about, so what did you find to struggle with? Like, okay. and then how did you like, so how did you trade with these people? So what do you think that would be like in ancient times? How oh, yeah. would they get that? So we were okay. able to, gotcha. so, I mean, and it was okay. Um, I think Via Appia was great because it's a fun tactile game, yeah. but it was really just like, uh, we were just talked about Rome. We had just talked about um, them. Uh, oh, our timer has gone off. Larry, and he, he would have made a good teacher. So <laughs> Keep but, going. Yeah, keep going. Um, and so that, that was really cool. So what I really wanted to do, um, kind of to end this up, is do you have any um, words of wisdom uh, when it comes to incorporating board games into the classroom or even to a homeschool parent or a parent of someone maybe who's distance learning? I would say do not be afraid to try it. Um just jump right in there. I mean, if you have a, especially for the little ones, because I know the little ones, the elementary, our kindergarten through, well, I don't know kindergarten, but kindergarten is a whole nother beast. <laughs> First through fourth, I would say if you have a favorite game from your own childhood, I mean, play it one weekend with your family and then think about how can I use this with the kids mm -hmm. and then jump in there, yeah. you know, just jump in there and try it. Um, because initially, I mean, Around these parts, you can't always go outside in the winter. Mm -hmm. And this year has been different. I mean, I've been virtually since August. Mm -hmm. um, and some days I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk to y'all on this computer anymore. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, but I mean, my babies have, they have, they've done admirably. They really have. But, you know, I haven't been able to get my hands on them. So I, we haven't, oops, we haven't done any games mm -hmm. or any team stuff it's yeah. you're well, and, and honestly i mean you know just encourage parents like not only is there cognitive benefits to actually playing games but just the social emotional mm -hmm. engagement right. of non because uh, they have to talk to real people uh, yeah really and real and, and the people. connection that in the you know unless you're you have anger issues when you you lose <laughs> i mean that right. and i mean just not from obviously from a teaching standpoint but being honest like she said we played a lot of games growing up and Truly, from all the way through school, from from Brick Church, which is which is where I went to primary school, all the way through to college, I was drawn on those times sitting around the table thinking, "Oh, okay, yeah, this is that. I need to. Okay, I need to. This is where I need to. Mm -hmm. You know." And 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 I can't tell you how, like you just said, how valuable that is. Yeah. And and again, we got that sitting at the table with our parents saying, "Come on, kids, let's play a game." Yeah. And of course, we learned the game, and I, I learned to use it to help me learn to count and all that stuff. But seriously, the social aspect was tremendous. And I, I'm, I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump on that uh, real quick. And parents, this is to you especially. You, um, front load your game time with your children to help them understand this is not about entertaining you 
first and foremost. This is about us spending time together. Mm -hmm. Because if the child goes in with the attitude that I must be entertained, the moment they start losing, yep. they're done. They're yep. out. Yep. You know, or they sour attitude, right, all right. of this kind of yeah. stuff. But if you go in, hey, we're going to spend time together, yeah. and I'm go we're going to learn this. Because yeah. um, this is what we did. Mm -hmm. It was an expectation. I told you, when my parents called and said, come it on, was. we're playing the game. Yep. We stopped what we were doing right. because yep. it was time to go yeah. and play it. And also, and here, here's another yeah. piece, too. <laughs> parents and teachers also, don't be afraid to teach in small chunks. Yeah. Just like, all right, hey, you know what? We're going to teach. Um, it, let's say you're learning checkers, okay? Let's just talk about moving. All right, boom, right. boom, boom, especially with little kids. And then do that for a little bit, then leave it alone and come back tomorrow. Okay, right. all right, now let's let's do, uh, no, what about jumping and yeah, and doing that way? Yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so, and again, do that. All right, I have one last thing, Larry. So good. Uh, for our listeners. So and, good. Um, so I actually came up with a quick list of um, four games and to actually incorporate at home to reinforce some particular skills. And so uh, one I've already mentioned was King Domino yep. so to, to reinforce multiplication. Yep. Uh, next, any of the 10 days games. So these there's 10 days in Europe, 10 days in America, 10 days in Africa. Um, all of these games, they're all about geography. They're all about um, crossing and, and this. And so they're, yeah. they're excellent resources to help people learn maps and, and different things like that. Um, uh, actually I have three and then my next one, and this is one that's new to me at least, um, and just, but I found for my research, but apparently it is the quintessential, like it, it, it transcends board gaming and is actually used in a number of science classes to teach the scientific method. And that's a game called Zendo. So basically what Zendo uses is it, what's the, the, what's the quirky, um, uh, the, 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 the triangles that stack on top of each other, like Looney Labs. Um, had a whole thing. So um, basically, Looney Labs is the creator of this game. But what it does is, is it it's just a bunch of these stackable triangles, and uh, no, not triangles, uh, pyramids. Uh, okay. That's yeah, the the um, they're stackable pyramids. So it comes with that, and it comes with white beans and uh, black beans, or um, uh, they're maybe they're marbles or whatever. I don't know. But what you do is, is one person is the game master mm -hmm. and they set up an imaginary rule. So for instance, all, um, yes, that's it. That's the game. But those are the triangle things. So Zendo, yeah. Super cool. Never heard of it. Okay. So, but basically what, what, what they'll do is, is they'll take the triangles, they will set them up in a formation in which that, in that, in that formation, the made up rule uh, or the law is being uh, used. And then they will take the, the triangles and they will create a, an, an organization of the triangles where the law is not being used. And they'll put a white one next to the one where it's being it's it's correct and a black one next to the um, one where it's not. And then each team has to postulate a theory and create things with their triangles where they think that they are using the incorrect, the correct law. And then the person will either give them a white bean or a black bean and eventually till you can kind of, through logic, can come out to the idea of like, oh, well, the, the law is every blue triangle must be pointing at a red triangle. And it like, I, I, like, let me just tell you is if you're, a, if you're a science teacher or if you're someone who likes to like, likes education, like if I had to say, go get something, it would be go get Zendo because now it is, it is not for like a, Hey, let's just entertain. It is like, it's straight yeah. up, it's straight up teaching. Well, the cool thing about that one is it sounds like it's, it's so involved enough where you really won't have to do a whole lot with the rules. You can just play that one as it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is cool. Well, very, very cool. Well, I'm so excited, y'all. That was some really good stuff. That was awesome. I'll be honest. I wish more of my teachers had played board games. Actually, you know, I have board game club at school. Yeah, well, they, before pre-COVID. We, we got it at PE when it was raining outside. And it was Connect <laughs> right. Four and Battleship. And if you didn't get to the front of the line because you was bad that day, you was going to pretty much be playing Connect you know, Four because Battleship was, went first. I would say, like, Battleship and PE class with dodgeballs would have been real fun. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We loved it. All the battleships would go immediately. So if you weren't good, because they used to line us up according to behavior. So if you were bad, you'd, I'm going to be playing Connect Four. Okay. Because all the battleships would be gone immediately. But no, guys, that was fantastic. I'm so glad you got to make it, sister. This was super cool. Well, hey, thank you for having me. You get to hang around because... We always play a game with guests. This guy acting like we weren't going to play the game. You know what's coming, except you don't know what the category is. <laughs> I put it, I'm throwing it at everybody tonight. That's awesome. But what we're going to do now is take a short break, and then we'll be right back 
after these messages from our sponsor. We want to thank the sponsors of today's episode, our friends at Van Ryder Games. Creators of award-winning games such as the single-player hostage negotiator and the one versus many detective City of Angels. You can find their full catalog of games, including their graphic novel adventures, at VanRyderGames.com. That's V-A-N-R-Y-D-E-R-G-A-M-E-S dot com, your FLGS, or wherever you buy your games online. All right, and we are back. We again want to thank our sponsors at Van Ryder Games. And hey, you know what, Alex? We got a guest at the table. And you know what we do when we have a guest at the table. We always play a game. I was going to say use our manners. Ooh, no, I don't do that. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we always play a game. And, and, and we, we come up with a list, a list of titles, Alex, that are not just good. They're, they're super, super good. good. So we're gonna come up with the top three. You like of- that? We did. We 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 actually have never really worked that. <laughs> it's like the one thing we're in sync in. It just comes out. <laughs> yes. We're gonna come up with the top three of something. That's what we normally do. This time, this list is the top three games to play when you're snowed in. And again, as we were talking during the break, I, I've only literally been snowed in once in my life, <laughs> That's which was like three weeks ago. What did you play? <laughs> so we'll talk that, about that it in will, a second. That will be the, that will be my <laughs> list of what I played three weeks ago. Gotcha. So I'll start us off. We'll go in reverse player order. No, we'll go in player order. So for me, then to Alex, and then to my sister, we'll go around that way. I'll start us off. First game that I would say I would play, these aren't in any order. They're just a top three, would be Sword and Sorcery. Sword. So you gotta you gotta really push into that W. Sword. I can't say sword. Swor- no, you said sword. Sw- I sword. Sword. I swore that he it was swore. the truth. <laughs> Adrian, he swore. <laughs> I had two teachers at the table. Anyway. <laughs> sword and sword and sorcery, which of course is a is a dungeon crawl. I, I want to play this with multiplayer, but I haven't got a chance to play, it, but it's so good solo. It's so good with the minis, and you get to build a map as you're going, and of course you're just killing monsters. It is in the one dungeon. of the most involved dungeon crawlers that I have played. It is. I it mean, is. it's it's not like Agreed. oh, let's just get in and roll. Agree. Like it's like no. It's the opposite of Tiny Epic Dungeon. Yeah. yeah. It is the and there's a lot of descents out there. There's a lot of them out there, but this, you're right. Yeah, I agree with was, you. This was pretty. Meaty. Right, but that's the first one on my list. What about you, sir? Uh, so the one I we actually played quite a bit of uh, during our, um, our our snow break was. Uh, lo- the lost ruin, uh, lost ruins of Arnak. So good. So yeah, so good. Um, and again, we've talked about it at length. But uh, Adrian, uh, ultimately, what you're doing is is you're a um, kind of a um, uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah, Indiana Jones uh, type character. You're 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 running around ruins. Uh, you're and basically, it's it's kind of set collection. Um, and it's it, it, it by the end of the game, you're turning in. It's like a puzzle. So you're okay. trying to. How do I get the particular things to get the highest score? Um, but man, it does. It throws kind of everything at you. So it's kitchen sink type game. But wow, it does it good. It, it, it does. does it, it does it really good. Agreed. So good. Sister. Okay. Well, as someone who has spent um, a lot of years being snowed in, I like right. being snowed in. Me too. I like the snow. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go back to my childhood classics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monopoly is the first game that came to mind. We, yeah, we had don't. many a Monopoly um, tournaments and championships <laughs> where we would start playing about, what, 6.30, oh. 7 o'clock at night, and at 2 in the morning, we, we were still at the we table. Still playing. still playing. Oh, my goodness, I remember that. <laughs> and sometimes yes. it would get a little cutthroat. You know, you trying As to borrow, should. yeah, As trying to should. borrow money from 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 your brother or your sister, and they're going no. A game of Monopoly, yes. <laughs> no, sell your hotels. But uh, Monopoly would be one of my top three snow okay. days. Super cool. My next one, one up. I think that's kind of a dangerous thing because this one's like you ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> right. Like somebody, <laughs> like you don't you you cross them. Like you did what now? You bought <laughs> what? You you want me to pay what as rent? I know where you sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you didn't help me out 10, 20 minutes ago when I needed help. Nope. Uh, my next one is an, another solo player because obviously I'm counting on current Snowden stuff. It's just me. So hostage negotiator. Mm. Um, so good. Now I've got some stuff coming up. I've been hitting at this one for the last several shows. Um, that's the game. I'll now throw that clue out there. I'm still not ready to talk about what I'm exactly doing with it. But uh, so good. I just I love that system. I love the tension. Put you in a different mindset. You are literally a hostage negotiator for the police. And someone is taking hostages. And they're not just straightforward, just like villains. 
There are people that their child is sick and the hospital refused them something or they lost their job or they've been done wrong. And so they've got, so you've got a lot of stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a grown up and adult game, not necessarily because of language and the situations, but what you go through sitting there playing by yourself, it really hits you in the stomach and takes you through there. And I just adore that system. So that's my second one. Hostage negotiator, Mr. Allen. Uh, my next one was, Alex. and I was so I'm glad. Not sure who Allen is. Alex. Alex. <laughs> it's all right. Allen, Alex. I mean, we only been across the table for five years. Um, so I'm going to uh, say was uh, Crokinole. Crokinole was oh, a... Oh, yeah. Man, it was, uh, so Crokinole is this big circular board that has... It's kind of a polished top, and it has little dice. And it's basically shuffleboard for your fingers. Mm. Um, and you get to kind of knock... Uh, I was going to borrow you, your table to take to them so they could play it. Oh, they would love that. I think you... I think they would, too. Yeah. Um, See? It's, See? Yeah, no, it's it's, it's it's and it's not hard to learn. It's it's an easy one. That's not why I'm I'm oh, scowling because okay. you remember earlier when he brings things to us and then he comes back and tells you how well or how poorly we played it. That's, That's why he, I'm like, he, oh, you want no pressure? Yeah, mm-hmm. he he does mm-hmm. throw you guys under the yeah. bus quite a bit. No, no pressure. Mm-hmm. So. See, he just trying to say that now because his wife has started listening now with a lot of his antics, and he's just trying to get me in on it too. <laughs> so. Back to you, sister. What's your next one? <laughs> um, actually, this game we played this year, which we had not played in a really long time. I don't think there was snow, though. Um, life. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. La- listen, life. we talked about that uh, quite a while ago. Yeah, I had yep. a blast. It was great. Yep. All right, Lee. Uh, my next one. I'm sorry. I'm typing. My next one is, the last one is another, of course, solo game, and this is another one that I love. You're building a fantastic character, and you're, you're ready to go on an adventure, and of course, with some of the expansions, now you can take the character on an adventure, but that is going to be role player mm. with or without the expansion. The expansion lets you take the character that you build on an adventure, but the base game is you're using dice and you're building a character with the dice. You're rolling the dice and you're putting the numbers into certain fields to get your stats for your character. The, the premise of the base game is to be the best one at doing that, and the game ends at that point. You don't do anything with the character. So, of course, everybody was like, oh, you want to do stuff with the character. So when he came out with the next one, now you can take that character, and then you can go on an adventure with him. But the the base game, snowed in, role player, get it out quick, get it in and out. I mean, 45 minutes, if that. And you've had a full-on adventure. So that's role player is my number three. Mr. Alex. Uh, my number three, I actually played way more than um uh, when you called me out on this. I had to go look up the, the games that I own. But, no. And I remember it like um, I actually played uh, quite a bit of this, and that's uh, Onitama. So oh, yeah. o- Onitama, it's a two-player. Yeah, two-player. That's good stuff. Yeah, really simple. Um, it's kind of like a chess, and it's um, but the board is smaller. You actually only have five pieces, um, and instead of each piece having its own um, rule of what it can do, there are five cards. You have two in front of you. Your opponent has two in front of them. And there's one kind of uh, in holding, and you play one of those cards, and it and, and it shows the pattern in which you can move any of your figures, mm. and, and so it. But it's always open information. So you play your card, you put it in the open spot, and then um, your uh, opponent. No, you play it. You play it in the open spot, and then you pull the card in waiting, and so that's your new hand of two. And so uh, we'll play that with my with Benjamin, who's in second grade. He loves it. How oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I, um, and I mean, that's one of his favorite games that we, he and I play together. And it, he, he's almost beat me. Actually, he did beat me. That's it, too yeah. cool. But I mean, it's such a simple game. And then I actually have kind of a third honorable mention, a game I wish I would have played um, more, actually at all. And I just now remembered that I owned it. Um, so, and that's Onirum. Uh, Onirum is actually a, um, uh, it's a, um, uh, a single player game. And it's a deck of cards that where you're um, uh, shuffling, drawing, pulling things out. Really cool, like really small. It's a cheap game. And if you if you're someone who needs just like, honestly, I would say Onirum is one of those games. Like it's like uh, there's a good there's a decent phone app for it. But it's one of those games like if you had the choice, if you're at home and you could like, oh, I want to play a board game, and like you look at your phone, I'd say no, go play Onirum because one game will last you. 15 minutes mm-hmm. like it's like it's like sitting and playing but you have this whole the whole card tactile nature uh, nature of it so that's uh Onirum. that would be the one i wish i would have played um while i was snowed in and now i'm just gonna have it with me just in case <laughs> <laughs> all right just do your last one um my last one is actually two <laughs> okay clue 
which we played as children. Yeah, I did. loved Clue. Um, and then you said board game or just a game? Listen, was, you get you get to do whatever you want. Well, I was thinking Uno. Yeah, it's a board game. Uno counts. Okay. Uno counts. Um, because I liked I like Uno, but and you haven't played with the Illinois Neils, and they played. Not in a long time. Cut cutthroat. Oh no, I remember y'all told me yeah, about that game. Yeah, yeah was, I'm, I'm glad it was I missed that. Game. Yeah, I'm glad I missed it that. It was game. fast paced, and they was <laughs> they was seeking to get blood, and it was like, oh my god. <laughs> um, but <That's> <laughs> but funny. it was it was it's a lot of fun. So those are my. Those are my three. Super, super. Or my four, I guess. Cool. That's okay. Yeah, we'll put it in as an honorable. Um, I have the, because, you know, I just bought the retro. They have a new set of Uno. They've, they've designed the cards. They're minimal. They're really, really minimal cards. They're like blackface cards with just like the symbols on them and the number. And I bought a deck of those. I have those. That's what I bought when I bought like at, at the end of the weather because they look fantastic. I, I need to get a picture of them and get them up on the Instagram if you guys haven't seen them. So those are fantastic. I always have to have a nice Uno deck of Uno cards. Well, fantastic. That is our not just good but super good with our guest, my eldest sister, Adrienne Neal. And I am so glad that she's been here with us. Mr. Alex, let's take a break, sir, and we're going to get on to the rest of the show. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. I know it was tough. I know you didn't know that we were coming back. You thought maybe this music would go on for too long. But here we are. We are back. And we are going to talk about a game. A game that... Whoo! That's my impression. Whoo! <laughs> so we are doing a first impressions. We, 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 we tried to do... Uh, Larry and I got together last night, and we tried to, to play uh, the game in question, and, we, and, I'll, and I'll share that in just a second, but I need you to understand kind of where we are coming from. We were going to do, like, listen, we're going to play a couple of versions, uh, rounds of this and get a good, um, uh, and, and get a, just a good feel for it so that we can give you an in-depth uh, on the table. Um, and, and literally within five minutes of, of, of playing the game. Two. Well, once we learned the rules and took our first two turns, Larry and I just looked at each other. And and when I when I tell you um, that I I had tears in my eyes, he's not kidding. I, I'm not I'm not kidding because what I what I was experiencing as I played it was this is like this is a game that I will play the rest of my life. Like it, it, it's it was, literally that good. Yeah. Yes. So so the, so Larry and I and we looked at each other and we go. There's no way that we could do this game justice um, and 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 uh, give it an accurate on the table. So we're going to give you our first impressions. The game that we're going to talk about is Maglev Metro, which is a Magnetic Levitation Rail uh, by Ted Alspach from uh, Bezier Games. And, and he's, so this is the designer of Suburbia and Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Um, I love Suburbia. Yeah. Um, um, but, th but this game... <laughs> I, I I mean I, I it's hard to know where to start. Yeah, it it really is. It really is. So I'm uh, so Larry. Here's what I'd like to do. Um, I'd like to just take a couple of seconds and walk through my thought process. Perfect. And, and then you can kind of come back on the end, yep. add anything you want. I'll add so, my stuff. So uh, as I as the game progressed, everything that I wanted to do, I, I I could I could do. I just couldn't do as much as I wanted. But the game never said. Like, oh, you can't do that. It always said, just, just, just wait, just wait, keep, keep doing what you're doing. And I'll, I will, I will slowly open up for you. And, 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 and it was like, it was beautiful <laughs> how the design just, and, and I mean, I'm not even talking about the components because I was over the moon for that. And that's something we can, we'll get into, but the design of the game, the sim, I don't, I, and it, I'm not going to say the simplicity. Um, because it's not a simple game, um, but it it just it, it slowly but surely over the course of our games just kept opening up into new possibilities, and so I knew that it's like okay, all right, I'm enamored with this now, but and I have a tendency to get enamored with something in the first couple of turns, and then as it gets to its end game, he didn't already sold it. Oh, shut up! But as it gets to its end game. I realized, oh, well, that's not exactly my, 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 my feeling that it was in the beginning. Well, for this one, that happened, but it actually happened and it went and it, my love for it grew exponentially yeah. because as the game began, uh, started to grow, 
towards uh, towards its climax, it then became almost I don't I, I, we used the word stabby when we played it, but like your choice, your yeah. interact the interactivity between players begins to open up. Yeah, and you like the game gets um you get the the the, the room at which you have to move gets real close and you start rubbing up against each other and, and the choices that you make not only affect you, but they affect the other player. And the things that, that are, were, are baked into this are just bananas. <laughs> or, or, it's just bananas. And, and guys, when, I mean, like this is, I haven't felt like th- about a board game like this, like I don't, in, in, in a very long time. And it, it, I, as I contemplated it today, it made me think, Man, this is what it was like the first time I re- like I ever knew what the hobby board gaming was. Yeah, and I don't even remember what that experience was. I yeah, you know what I do? It was the first uh, the first time I played. For me, my intro into hobby level board gaming. Um, it took a couple of years to really take hold, but my intro level into hobby board game was Lord of the Rings Trilogy Edition Risk. There you go. Which is, I mean, it's, it made your list not too long ago. Right, and yeah. it's, and it, again, it had it has elements of true strategy games, but still risk. And it, and when I first played that, my mind just went, whoa, there's so many possibilities. Guys, Maglev Metro. I, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so for me as well, I've, I've, I've kind of put my thoughts down and my first impressions are the same thing. It leads off with a wow. And I'll say it this way. I mean, this is an Ausbach. So what I mean by that is, while the game is not specifically easy to learn per se, it is able for you to be grasped with moderate effort. And what I will say about the difficulty spike and or the curve and what Alex was saying at the top of his was that when you start playing, the intricacies of what you are doing, they fit together in such a well thought out way that the complex is made simple. It, and it's no really kind of like no other way to put it. It just makes the complex stuff simple. Now, why you're doing what you're doing and what you can do just continued to blossom as we played. And like Alex said, it just, it just continued to open. Blossom is a beautiful word. That's, the, that's a continued. really appropriate word. That's all it did. I mean, and, and that yeah. was the thought. I'm thinking, wow, this opened up. And we, we were reading the rules. And then, of course, you have the theory of the rules. But then when you saw the practice, that's the only thing I can liken it to. It was just, the, you know, the blossoming of a flower. Because we're both sitting there going, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. And so once you have an idea and you get some experience, playing this game with a non-experienced gamer is going to be a huge disadvantage on the non-experienced gamer. Okay, and as someone who's experienced playing this game, that's also part of Allspox Designs. Because like he said, his games earlier that we mentioned, some, some, some of the rest of his ludology, it's the same way. If you know the game and the person that you're teaching they don't, you're going to have a bit of an advantage. That's just part of it. This is still such a fun game. The Like Alex said, I know he, did, he only touched on it briefly. Man, the components in this one are through the roof. This game is not even nearly overproduced. But the level of production that they conceived for the game is just so high. Just meeting that blows pretty much everything else on the market out of water right now. It is fantastic. It, it could be overproduced, but it's not. When you get it, everything has a function. It has a form. Those clear tiles are genius. The way the tiles lay over and you don't, you can't block anybody out. The double-thick stations are fantastic. The die-cut boards with the inset pieces, all fantastic stuff. The trains, the metal trains. Oh, so. <laughs> the trains are fantastic. So the meat here of the game is the engine. And there's a delightful twist of when you need to shift from building out your network to moving passengers. That is so satisfying. Now, of course, with Alex, like Alex said, with us, we were both playing. We were only playing at two players. Um, it got pretty, it was pretty civil until the end. We just kind of did our own things. But then at the end, and that's one of the reasons why I'm going to back off of the word stabby, because it's not for two reasons. One, the way the characters came out of the bag is random. Mm-hmm. And you have to draw them. You have to replenish the station. That's how you get them. And as far as the rest of it is concerned, it is what it is. You know, that's the way the game is designed. Did I pull some 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 passengers out that I could use? And did Alex come over and snipe them up? Sure he did. But that's the nature of the game. Now, the beautiful part, too, about that move, the what helped soften that move, is that there were two other passengers that I could get to on my next turn that would help me do the same thing. You know, getting the ones that he pulled would have helped me more and the score in the very end. But still, I was able to, like you said, move through and do what it was that I needed to do. The actions that you take are based on points. And the points is what you spend your time building up. So that's kind of where the simplicity comes in. Seems like Ted went out of his way, or the designers and the developers went out of their way to take this game, take some really, really extreme concepts and really make them simple, but still keep them elegant. Because they, you, you could have been counting. Let's just talk about movement for a second. Movement, you get movement points. So on your movement turn, you say, I'm moving. You have two movement points. That means you can move two spaces. Well, you may have laid 
four or five tiles between stations. Guess what? That doesn't matter. You're counting stations, not the tracks. And that helps the game keep moving. That helps it be simple. And all of the things that you can do, picking up passengers, dropping off passengers, building stations, laying track, pulling up track, they're all managed the same way. So that helps it move along. That helps you keep from getting down in the weeds. It keeps it from being too crunchy. And it is so, so good. Listen, when you push back from one of Ted's games that you've played, and this one has been my favorite of his so far, you do feel it. While you're playing it, it's fun and you're having a blast. When you push back and you're done, you're thinking, oh, this is brain burning. Okay, I need a minute. But that is such a good and satisfying feeling. So, yes, we're definitely going to play this one more. We're going to get this one in at higher player counts. That's, again, Maglev Metro by Ted Osbach, published by his company, Bezier Games. Just released in 2021. We're going to talk a little bit more about missing it or not missing it or expansions and some other stuff in the next segment. So come back for that. But, guys, this game is fantastic. If you get a chance to own it, you get a chance to play it. If you're listening to us, then by all means, go and do it. So. That is it for our first impressions of Maglev Metro. We're going to take a short break and come back with our last segment. Hey, and we're back. And we're, of course, adding a whole new segment because you know what? That's it's segment just, time. It's just what we do. We don't even go back to the old segments anymore. We just add new ones. Wait, that ain't true. That's true. We do go back to the new ones. But this is a good one, and you came up with it. It's fantastic. That's true. That's true. So this segment is called, Larry, I need your help. So basically, uh, what we do here is each host brings his personal issues with the board game industry to one another. The other host then offers helpful advice, and both hosts walk through the very real feelings that our hobby manifests. And so, oh, let me so, open up my notes. Yep, yeah, yeah. Well, and so this is not like a point counterpoint. This is like just I'm uh, honestly, I'm trying to be real, and I'm not trying to be funny here. Like I really am. I've got some issues that I don't know what to do with. So uh, the best way that I think to do this is to talk about my issues on the air with my very good friend Larry, and you guys just get to listen. But I feel that this may actually be something that some of you guys are dealing with. Absolutely. And- and then maybe Mar- uh, that Larry can um, kind of help us walk through our feelings and maybe give us some practical advice of, uh, of sort of, uh, you know, what to do with these feelings. Um, I, I, it's not that I have like a crush on a board game or anything and, you know, none, nothing like that. But uh, ultimately, so what I am, what I'm struggling with is I don't know what to do with expansions. I just, you're already stopping me. No, I'm not. I'm no, sorry. I'm counting. Oh, you're counting. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. What do you, bad. what do you, why are you counting? I'm just making sure I got you got all that I hit all your points. That's oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let me go ahead. So I don't know what to do with expansions. So here let me let me kind of unpack that. Uh, number one, I'm afraid of missing out on content. And I am struggling that publishers are releasing things at a breakneck pace. And the the way the current market is, is if I if I don't buy it immediately, I'm probably not gonna get it. And I know it all kind of comes back to this idea of like fear of missing out FOMO yeah FOMO but like if it's a game I love I want to own all of it because I, I want it to be complete now part of that is my personality I sure. want I'm a completionist a lot of board gamers are like that. right I want to own everything but part of me too is this like am I getting caught am I living in what the industry wants me to live in uh, y- you know how do I break free from that and, and and so, all right. So, Larry, help, help me walk this out, man. Cool. We will. Okay. We'll start off first up on expansions. Just just do your research on the expansion. You know, make sure that that particular expansion that's coming is the type of content that you want, that, that you may be missing out on. Okay. So in I, other words, so if it's me, adding a player, mm-hmm. but you're never playing at max player count anyway, you don't need that expansion. Why would you get it? Okay. All right. I, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm listening. Or if there is a particular part of the game, maybe let's say, it is a pick up and deliver game, but one of the mechanics is one of your least favorite. If the expansion is is zeroing in on your least favorite expansion, do you really want to expand? Well, your least but favorite I would say of? this: with a lot of expansions, I don't know if I'm not if I don't want it. Well, that's one reason why I said do your research. Okay, All right. but because okay. I, I got you, because okay. no, I, and I'm the same way. I mean, I own quite a few too. So this because there's was, a lot of expansions that just kind of come out of nowhere, and you're like. I didn't know I needed that. Right, right. And you can go in and you can look at them. Um, one in, in um, the last Nemo's. Nemo's War? Yeah, the last one of those expansions, which I probably technically needed. 
when I looked at it and the more that I looked at what was in it, based on my amount of play, I didn't get it. I skipped. So I, so I was like, you know, you, you can look into them and get your research. I say this too, a good rule of thumb for me. When an expansion is announced for a game you own, and it, and it may be aimed at you, like I said, if, it's, if you pass all the other tests, hey, this is some content I want. This looks like something I want. Revisit the game as much as possible. Whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, whatever you're playing, wherever you go and get that box off the shelf. Make sure that one hits your table. Play the base game, the part of the game that you already own. Play it as much as possible, particularly if you've been away from it for a while because those different eyes are going to let you get a different look. Okay, that's that's good. And that's going to get you back into it to even know, hey, do I even want any more of this game or is it FOMO? Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, we're going, at the end of the day, you're going to have to do the hard thing and look at the mirror and be like, no. Right. You may have to look at the mirror look at yourself and be like, I, don't, I just want this because I want it. There, there's no reason. You know, I'm playing a game, I love it, or whatever. It doesn't fit. Those are a couple of the things that that I use um, in terms of dealing with that first part. Now, of course, the fear of missing out on content, again, just make sure that it's content that you want. Publishers releasing things at a breakneck pace. A couple of things on that one. That's basically the current market, and we've talked about this before, but these are the results of Asmodi consolidating, okay? And I'm not saying that Asmodi is evil probably going to start using a different phrase of just the consolidation in the hobby board gaming market. It's just the byproduct of this type of market behavior, which is the whole reason why I was cautious in the beginning. The fact that everything started consolidating, guess what, man? The smaller publishers who can survive on putting out games at a slower pace or one or two a year, they either combined to make themselves bigger so now that they can't, or they got subsumed into Asmode. Well, that's it. You know, Asmode is big enough now as a company and the companies and the publishing houses they took in yeah, they can't live on one game at a t- at a, a year. Because, again, as we both know, we've said this before too, board games are not video games. The margins on these two products are probably comparable, but we both know the yields in board game is way lower than video games. Also, too, the shelf life is just the opposite, right? Like you said, we've been playing Maglev Metro. If this copy didn't wear, I'd be playing the rest of my life. I got some cartridges at the house now and even had a console that they came with. But new versions have come out, and the video games iterate. Well, board games don't. They don't iterate like that. This thing is like, again, if you don't have a flood or a fire, as long as you take care of it, this will be here for forever. We don't need to run out. I don't need to run out and buy another copy of Maglev Metro. So they've got to do something else. And all board games have that same issue. So again, it's just, it's market conditions in terms of the pace. So just bear that part in mind. It's like, yeah, they, they're, they're cranking them out. Who's doing it, right? Is it somebody from AG? Is it is it Asmode? Is it one of these big, huge companies? Yeah, they have to, you know, they have to. Once they sell you your game, that's it. You're not paying DLC, thank goodness. We don't want that over here, by the way. So that's one of the things in terms of the publishers releasing at a breakneck pace. It's just, it's currently the current market struggle that we're at. The market trends to make things harder to require after initial release window. Now, this one is a big one. This one is on us, as in talking about the consumers. And this is what I mean, just in period. People can at me all day, all day long if you want to, but this one is on us as consumers. Listen, We have to stop buying in, stop overpaying, and stop giving scalpers a reason to ply their trade. The only reason why they do it is because they know they're going to make money. I'm going to go, and I'm going to open up, go through all the trouble of opening up all these accounts. I'm going to bounce around Miniature Mark, and I'm going to bounce around Cool Stuff with all these accounts, and I'm going to buy up all their copies of Maglev Metro. And then I'm going to run out to my eBay store and put them all up for $225. And people are going to pay it. So we have to stop doing that. Also. This is a big, huge one. Need you to support, y'all know, y'all have heard me say this before, support the hobby board game retail mechanism, guys. Support the hobby board game mechanism. What I'm talking about, shop at your FLGS and your OLGS, your online game store, if you can, right? If you can afford a few more bucks or simply cover the shipping, which of course, in some cases, it could be free shipping that you may may no longer be getting, then do it. I'll say this again. They're not evil. They're just in business. Big box retailers. And online big box retailers, the Amazons, the Walmarts, the Targets, those guys, they just want to sell you goods, period. They don't care what it is. They don't care if it's a hose pipe. They don't care if it's a pair of shoes or if it's a copy of Maglev Metro. They just want to sell you something. And again, that's why they're not evil. That's just the business that they're in. They want to sell you goods. Their money's not going back into our hobby board game ecosystem, though. Their money is going off into another ecosystem, which keeps them putting more things up. So listen, if you like hobby board games, you want to support it, then do. Don't tweet about it. Don't just do an Instagram post about it. Go out and support these folks. Support your FLGS, your your online game store. Support. Keep the money inside. That will help. And again, stop supporting the scalpers. 
And then that one's on us. That has nothing to do with the publishers. That has nothing to do with the distributors, the people who make the games or any of that. That's on us as consumers. And remember, in the U.S. at least, most of our games are physically made overseas. That means when the initial shipments sell out, it can be a legit six plus months before a restock. Sometimes it may be a year. That's just normal over here. Okay. Listen, plan ahead and be prepared to get new games when they come out. And this is about your FOMO. Or be patient. Okay. In this regard, hobby board games are unique. It takes longer to get these relatively larger boxes from overseas than most every other type of entertainment. We're talking movies, CDs. Yeah, they're still CDs. Blu-rays, you know, game discs. It doesn't take them long. They sell out. They sell 7 million copies of Final Fantasy VII Remake. And they sell out. Guess what? Next week, there's 20 more got here. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do that with board games. We don't make them in those numbers, but again, just physically stop and look at the difference in the box size. Those boxes are huge. The logistics of it just don't work. So, and obviously there's no digital distribution for the full versions of the physical version of a board game. There are some good physical versions out there that you can play in digital if that's what you want. But if you're saying you want to hold a box in your hands, the only way to do that is to hold the box in your hands. Okay. So again, pre-order it, pay for it up front or be patient. This is going to get easier, I think, once things open up in terms of, of course, the pandemic and everything with the FLGS is coming back because you may be able to go and play it. Like, you know, if they had down at Game Point, if you had copies of this, while you're waiting on it to come back in stock, you could still go to Nashville and play it. You could still go somewhere here in Murfreesboro and play it. So that would help. Once that opens up, that'll give you some help. But again, plan for it, guys. Jump on it when you first see it. If you can't because of monetary constraints, then that's okay. Just be patient then and know that it may be six to eight months, maybe a year before they get back. Probably won't be that long for a title as big as something like this, but you're going to be waiting at least a six most likely. And it's just logistics. Again, getting them made, getting them shipped on a ship over here to the U.S. And then lastly, on the FOMO front, too, I just want to say this. Remember, if it's a new game, man, and it's still in print, and it's actively getting expansions, you got time to get them. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going out of print. If it just came out, you got time to get them. And if you're smart, and if you once you pull the game back off your shelf and you love it, just wait till like next summer and somebody will be clearing it. And you can get it from an FLGS mm -hmm. or an online game store for 20 bucks because they'll be clearing it out because we do know that once these things get old, they aggressively move them. You know, they got to dump them. I don't want to sit on my, I get it. It's a $90 retail, but yes, yes, that price tag for $4.99 is correct because I need that box out of here. <laughs> you know, I mean, they do that. You know, they absolutely do it. So just wait. So again, those are my biggest tips to help you because I hey man I feel you this is one I think pretty much all hobby board gamers deal with this most likely to different extents yeah yeah absolutely and that's why I want kind of want to talk through it so oh well Larry thank you sir that was that was that was informative and helpful and I, hopefully uh, my realness can help uh, other people uh, kind of just walk through that so yeah. all right well cool 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 is it that time wow wow <laughs> we have made it to the end of another episode and you have made it here with us so thank you so very very much so what do we say mr alex i'm not sure i i'm that i always say wow and yeah but we always say something else i mean this is alex wallace saying keep playing oh there you go that jogged my memory. You know, sometimes I forget. No, oh, okay. So we, it wasn't just me going, oh, was I supposed to say something? Yeah, you. no, you were supposed to say something. What was I supposed to say? <laughs> oh, so for the spoken token. Oh, I missed that part. Oh, all right. It's late. It's late. <laughs> this is Larry Neal saying, keep communicating. And this is Alex Wallace saying what I already said from the moment before. Keep playing. This has been the Spoken Token Podcast. If you would like to interact with us, please find us at Facebook, at The Spoken Token, on Instagram, at The Spoken Token Podcast. Our Twitter account is at The Spoken Token. Email is The Spoken Token Podcast at gmail.com. And our BGG guild number is 2656. listening to a Pod Studio One Podcast Network podcast. Find more great podcasts at www.podstudioone.com.
I think I've, I've, I've always been wondering, like, if we were to have a T-shirt, you know, what would it say? What would be, like, our catchphrase? And at first I thought, like, oh, it'd have to be kind of our end tag, like, you know, this is Larry Neal thing, keep playing, and this is Alex Wallace thing, keep communicating, or whatever we say. Um, but you know what? Wow. Yeah, it's true. I, I, I always remember it at the end because you cue me and you say your part. And I'm like, oh, I have to say that other part. But um, no, but I think, I think our actual, I think our actual catchphrase is, and we're back. Like, because you, like, if I don't say that when we come into a new segment, Larry literally says, no, no, sorry. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. And I have to do the whole singing thing over again. You mean like all of this? No, I already said, and we're back. Yeah, but it's all other stuff. No, this is good. Don't (laughs) don't you threaten to cut me, Larry. Don't you threaten to edit me out. That's another thing that he does. He tries to edit me out. I will not be edited out. I will not be silenced. I'm probably going to listen to this and go, dang it, he edited me out. (laughs) 